impressive schedules uh, to keep, particularly with, uh, with uh, Mayor Booker. Uh, but we will have Martin and David here, and if there's time at the end, we will have some additional questions. Um, at this point, I want to welcome up to the panel with me uh, Duncan Niederauer, the CEO of uh, NYSC Euronext. If we can give a big hand for, for Duncan, please. And John B. Meyer, the CEO of uh, KPMG. Now, uh, gentlemen, what I want to do is just take a few minutes to kind of walk through, have you walk us through what your corporate responsibility vision is. And then we, uh, through the course of our morning discussion, we had some questions come up about uh, corporate responsibility reporting and sustainability reporting. We'll talk a little bit of time about that, but also sort of where communities and companies are going. Uh, and I'd like to get your thoughts on that, particularly because the two of you sit in a very interesting place in the market. Both of you, uh, 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 Duncan, in your role as the head of, the, uh, of an exchange, you look at sort of the movements of capital markets all the time. Uh, John, in your role as an auditor, and in full disclosure, I'm, I'm an alum of the, the illustrious firm, uh, but you have a unique position in the world as auditors and as consultants, so we'd like to kind of pick your brain about those things. But let me start off with uh, your corporate responsibility vision. What's, what's your own vision for your own firm's approach to corporate responsibility? And give us a sense of what's working and where you'd like to see it go. And Why don't you go first? John, I'll let you okay. give it a go. All right. Well, good afternoon. It's great to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. <coughs> so, uh, you know, I think real quickly, we, we tend to think about corporate responsibility uh, first and foremost under the umbrella of how do we make sure our people understand this is not some nice to have thing over to the side, but this is integral to our business priorities. And, and the, the language we use is therefore important. So we talk about corporate responsibility in the context of four pillars of sustainability. And we talk about market sustainability, which gets right to the heart of our role, uh, the role we play in the capital market system, and what our people do for a living day in and day out. That gets to sustainability of the marketplace that we operate in. And we talk about environmental sustainability as one of those pillars and our responsibility to uh, enhance and improve the environment. We have a, what we've characterized as our KPMG Living Green program, which um, we can get into if we have a lot more time on the details. The third pillar around sustainability is community sustainability, which gets right to the heart of what our people and we as a firm do out in the communities, the, the, the primary focus from a community sustainability standpoint for KPMG is education, particularly uh, primary education. And we've got a major program around literacy that's focused on uh, preschool and early childhood literacy that we have um, made a substantial investment in over the last five or six years and is a mainstay of our community sustainability effort. And lastly, uh, it's around talent sustainability, which again, those that language is intentional. It gets right to our diversity and inclusion initiatives, but it's built around the concept of we need to be a sustainable organization from a talent standpoint as well, so people don't see diversity and inclusion as some other program that sits off to the side, but they see it as part of our talent sustainability commitment, and diversity and inclusion is fundamental and foundational to that talent sustainability initiative. So by trying to talk about it as um, one initiative around four pillars of sustainability, we've tried to break down some of, I think, the historical impediments we've had as an organization to people viewing corporate responsibility as not something that our business leaders are accountable for, but that some person you've designated as the head of your corporate responsibility is responsible for. Right. So I, I get KPMG Green and I get diversity and inclusion through talent sustainability. Why, why early childhood education? Why is that important to KPMG? You know, when I came into the role, uh, we've had a culture of commitment to the community since the day I joined the firm 30, I'm not going to tell you, but 30 some years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's been a core part of our fiber as a firm and individuals and professionals. But when I came into the role, my view was we were scattered all over 20 different things. Mm -hmm. And part of that was intentional because our goal has been to always encourage people to find their interest and then go chase it and then we'll support you which literally creates a very diffused and therefore i think less impactful uh, kind of result mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time thinking about 
what do we think we could have a major impact in, number one? What do we think we can get 22,000 people in the United States to rally around? And, th and thirdly, what do we think is close enough to our, the core of what we do as a firm and the role we play that it will actually be perceived as part of our core business strategy and not some nice mm -hmm. do-gooder kind of activity? And education fit all of those for us. It's, yeah. it's obviously core to what we are as a firm from a mm -hmm. professional services firm. And um, as, as the more we talk to our people and we really engage them in this effort, our people are passionate about uh, this topic and about making a difference. And it's been incredible, the impact. We started the what we call our KPMG Family for Literacy program uh, about five and a half years ago. And in those five and a half years, through the efforts, grassroots of our people, uh, we've donated two million books to kids who never had a book before. Mm -hmm. uh, and not only just donated the book, it's a very active and involved and integrated program around helping them learn to read r through access to their first book, mm -hmm. as well as uh, access to some people who care about whether they learn to yeah, read. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Duncan? Uh, it's, all, all the stuff is pretty obvious to the professionals in the room, I'm sure, right? It's <coughs> you, the gentlemen who were on before us talked about leading from the top. <coughs> if you don't, if John and I don't lead these efforts, then it's just talk, right? It mm -hmm. doesn't amount to anything because your, your people uh, don't believe it and they think it's just an adjunct and then they do it if they want to but so if you're if you're not prepared to lead from the top then you, you shouldn't even engage in the discussion quite frankly so so we do it quite <coughs> quite happily and I think it's really become for us now a part of our identity right it's one of the reasons people want to work here mm -hmm. um, we have this unbelievable brand we have this unbelievable history and much like John described with KPMG I thought we were probably not as like our hearts were in the right place, we just weren't having an impact, right? Um, so I think what we've done a really good job under Michelle's leadership with the last few years is 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 get people more focused. And sure, it, it's great to get recognized by the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. It was, I thought it was really great for us as a company to be the first exchange that put our money where our mouth was and could say we were carbon neutral. You know, you want to celebrate things like being part of the Carbon Disclosure Project, being in the FTSE for Good Index, being one of the most ethical companies, because that shows your employees that it does. people do take notice of it. Mm -hmm. But then when we take a step back as leaders, we say those awards are simply acknowledgement that other people are saying we are putting our money where our mouth is. Like, I put those to the side and say, it's about you earn the right to say more when you do more. Mm -hmm. Right, so if you do more first, then that gives you the right to talk about these things because you've already evidenced that you're walking the walk. And then what we start say to our people is, what can we do that's connected with our DNA here that where we can dare to make a difference, you know, in, in the ways that we think we're most able to do that, right? If you do that, it, it has to be close enough to what you do that it's not an out-of-body experience for the people that work with you, right? Mm -hmm. So what we've, re what we've really tried to focus on, and we'll talk about it, I'm sure, later in the discussion, is to go into areas where we think we have the platform that enables us to convene groups like we're convening today, where it's a natural discussion, or the equivalent to KPMG's educational efforts for us has been financial literacy. Mm -hmm. like, I thought that made perfect sense for us to be involved in the middle of that discussion, and we decided to focus on workplace financial literacy mm -hmm. because that gave us a connection to our companies. Our companies collectively employ 40 million Americans in the United States, and we thought a shocking number of them are not equipped to make the basic decisions that we all take for granted. How can we put some things into the workplace that, you know, using that natural connection we already have to the company? Mm -hmm. And then it works, right? Because mm -hmm. then you can have an impact. Mm -hmm. Now, both of you run organizations that are it's thousands, if not tens of thousands of people and communities all over the world or all over the country. Uh, we're about to hear from Mayor Booker in a few minutes and his work in Newark. H how do you guys define community? How do you pick like which community, what is your community and how do you engage with, uh, with those communities? Yeah, that's, we only have 3,000 employees, but we have, we, we, you could argue we operate the largest B2B network in the world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, our, our community is at the core of our strategy, and our community is all of our listed companies, and in the time we've all been together here the last few years, we've now expanded that 
way beyond just the actual companies that are already public, but the much broader ecosystem of all, everything from a main street business all the way to the you know, biggest corporations in the world. So we, we start by trying to define the answer to that question broadly and then be prepared to implement it professionally across the organization, but as leaders personally too. Mm -hmm. So for example, late, later this evening, like you will see just how good our events team is, where you are all sitting right now, we'll actually be hosting a dinner for about 70 people that, um, that I organized on the back of a trip. I took um, a civilian trip to a bunch of military bases last summer and we're bringing back a bunch of people from that trip, some people from the Defense Department, a number of specialists in the area of PTS who are trying to raise awareness for all the things we need to do for our returning veterans, and then we're gonna staple onto that a general initiative to raise awareness for the hiring of veterans. Um, every one of our companies who's here, is th this is an issue they should care about, mm -hmm. and so we just use our platform to be the convener and say, we call CSR collaborative social responsibility, not corporate social responsibility. So let's collaborate around important topics like jobs, like the hiring of veterans, like making sure our, our veterans get the services they need when they come home, you know, like financial literacy, et cetera, et cetera. So your community can be what you define it to be. Some people think, oh, it's the cities in which I operate. I would beg to differ, but we have, we have the luxury of having a community. We can define our community the, any, any way we want it to be and it's where can we have an impact by convening people that we have an, a, a, a relationship with are ready to make a difference. Right. What about for you guys? You know, I think for us it really follows our people. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, this has to be something, if it's going to be real, back to Duncan's comments and I think some of what I said before, I can't have our people believing that it's somebody else's, when we talk about corporate responsibility and sustainability, yep. that's somebody else's job. Mm -hmm. It's got to be part of the fiber of every one of our 22,000 people. And the only way to do that, at least in our world, is to get them connected and personally involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I've, I've got a rule where I won't support anything financially that one of my people is not actively engaged in. So if you come and you want a donation from KPMG, or you want us to buy a table at some event, if some of our people aren't engaged and, and doing more than just bringing financial support to the organization, then that's a pretty good barometer that's not something we're gonna prioritize. Yep. Yep. So for us, it does get back a little bit more to where our people are. Mm -hmm. We're in 90 cities across the US, 140 countries across the world, and I think um, we have largely defined our community as where our people work and live. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. supporting them in getting connected and making sure they feel like it's part of their responsibility. If you're gonna be at KPMG, you cannot be successful if all you do is go to work and do a great job for our clients. You've gotta be making a difference in the broader environment that you operate in. Mm -hmm. That may not be your local community because we have people on the road all the time and that probably gets more to what Duncan's describing of a more global view of community. But for a lot of our people, it is local. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's our people in Kansas City adopting a Title IX school in Kansas City and, and having a commitment that they're gonna take an illiteracy rate of 90% in this school wow. to 40% in three years and getting a rallying around that and making a difference and measuring that impact. Mm -hmm. Now I wanna widen the aperture a little bit and not just focus on your own firms, but also because of where you sit in the market, how you see things generally. And I was having a conversation last night with Reg Foster from IBM and a lot of these programs, corporate responsibility programs, are subjected to the idea that they need to near to the bottom line. But I would argue that the place to look for a corporate responsibility value isn't on the P&L, it's on the balance sheet. That it's in that 80% of the intangibles uh, that make up the, the, the value of a lot of the companies on your uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a lot of what you've talked about is how what you're doing, these programs are helping you to open up new markets or they're helping you to demonstrate value in your community. So do I, do I have it wrong? I mean, where, where do you see uh, corporate responsibility impacting how companies account for their activities and interact with capital markets? How do you think investors assess these things? Um, and John, given where you are in the market, I mean, what are you seeing in terms of what people are expecting? Well, <clears throat> I think the people that get it mm -hmm. would agree with you. This is a balance sheet issue, not a P&L issue. Um, now, having said that, like most investments that you make, to build 
your long-term balance sheet has, I believe, a payback from a profitability standpoint as you go forward. And the more we do uh, to create and build and sustain a culture where our people believe we care about more than just <clears throat> making money for our firm, mm -hmm. and it's just as high a priority that we are making an impact and a difference in the places we have an opportunity to do that, that helps us retain our people, that helps us attract <coughs> people. Yep. And the one thing I know for sure is if I have the best people, I will be the most profitable firm. Mm -hmm. And so there is clearly a connection, but I, I think you're right. We view it from the context of stewardship and building long-term value in the organization, which will certainly enhance our profitability as we go forward but we don't view it as a P&L issue because if you do that, you can get caught up in mm -hmm. what's our cost to support these activities as opposed to looking at it as an investment we're making in our people, an investment we're making in our communities, and an investment that is clearly going to pay off in the long-term health of the organization as we go mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duncan? So y you can look at this so many different ways, and there are people in this room that are far more expert than I on this topic. So I will just share a few observations because I really think it depends on the lens you look through. So let's start with uh, investors. Um, I've been a CEO of a public company for almost six years now. Six occasionally hellish years, I might, <laughs> I might pause to know. Um, the, I have had exactly zero investors ask me mm. about our corporate responsibility plans and you know how do I think it's affecting the bottom line and is it a talent you know you know is it a talent identification and retention tool zero just to be I'm sorry to be that blunt but it's never come up the only thing that's come up with investors is you know my wife and I have been purposefully public around the autism effort and a lot of people have noticed that and they certainly think that's important and admirable and many of them have children that are you know, similarly affected and they, I think they really appreciate us being out front on that issue. That's as close as we've come to anything I could describe as you know, corporate responsibility being on the mind of the investor. Now let's move down. If you're a B2C company, I think that the, your, your customers really, really care, mm -hmm. right? It is increasingly more challenging for a consumer facing company to you know, um, to measure up, mm -hmm. right? More is going to be expected, more should be expected, that's great. So I think for those companies, the consumer is gonna drive it and expect you to be behaving in a certain way or else they will actively choose not to do business with you, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's as it should be, I think that's a great trend. Uh, I think that's a great trend in society. For us, I think the easiest thing to measure is what's the impact that it has uh, on our employees, and then the customers that they cover in this B2B network that I described. And our answer to that would be very, very clearly, it, it bonds you more to your clients when you work on things together, like the collaborative effort that Michelle led around financial literacy. It is, you know, we, we are, I'll use Walmart as an example. I don't know if there's anybody from Walmart in the room, like Mike Duke and I have absolutely gotten closer because of this shared commitment to what we can do for the country's veterans. There's no question about it. Now, we didn't go out of our way to try to figure that out. It wasn't an obvious, ex you know, I didn't have an expectation of that, but it's certainly, you can feel that the relationship between our two firms is tighter because we feel like we have that shared responsibility, everything from our involvement with the Medal of Honor Foundation all the way down to the remarkable announcement they made as a company to hire 100,000 veterans in the next five years. R really just a terrific commitment from Mike. Um, and, and then what we think we can measure is the impact it has on our employees and their desire to work here. Mm -hmm. If you think what this industry has been through in the last four or five years, and we've, we've basically had almost zero turnover, mm -hmm. right? People haven't left when it would have been very easy to leave. We've been through failed mergers, a new merger, like people have just stayed and, and, and employee satisfaction has gone up to world-class numbers and it's gone up every single year we've all been together. This is a huge part of that, right? Because mm -hmm. they, they come into work and they say, wow, we worked for veterans, we worked on the Jobs Act, we did the big startup, we're trying to get involved in microfinance, we teamed up with Team Rubicon after Sandy, our Japanese people went and helped in Fukushima. Like, 
it, it, there's no way people are going to tell me that doesn't have an impact on people's desire to work here. And if that means we're keeping the best and the brightest, that's good enough for me. Mm -hmm. That's more than good enough for me, right? I'm not measuring the P&L impact. Like, we're here to do good work and leave the world better than right. we found it. Right. Like, so who, who wants to measure the P&L of that? The P&L is in here. Yeah. It's not on a piece of paper. Right. Right? So from your viewpoint, you've seen it. You haven't heard from investors, but you do see an impact on customers, on yep. partners, on employees. Employees, for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm going to take some questions from the audience. So I'm putting my friends with the running mics on notice uh, for that. But before I, I do that, uh, you know, a lot of what I, I'm kind of hearing from Duncan is that there were things that um, perhaps investors don't care about, but that increasingly communities and, and employees and customers do care about them. But those things don't appear on the P&L. They don't appear on the balance sheet. I can't have an auditor on a, on, a, on a panel about corporate responsibility and not ask about integrated reporting. I mean, John, where, where do you think <laughs> things are going to go? Do you think that so we're going to see more uh, integrated <laughs> reporting and, and, and accounting for these things formally? Yes. Good answer, John. <laughs> <laughs> we'll open the floor to questions. Anything else? Uh, yes. Very astute you know, answer. Uh, yeah. I, l listen, there is a, I will say this. There is a lot of effort going into it. Mm -hmm. I think it's more complex than meets the eye. And when you really get into it, uh, if you're going to talk about reporting on sustainability measures, <clears throat> those measures are so different depending upon the nature of the organization you're talking about that it sounds like it should be about a two-month exercise to say, come up with some globally consistent standards and metrics that we can adopt and then anybody who wants to report, and if a firm like ours wants to attest to the accuracy of that information, it should be easy. It is proving to be very complex, but there are a lot of people working on it. I think as that effort is going on, I think there are two tracks that we're going down here. Because we don't want this to be one of those things where we develop something, you say, okay, we got it ready, you turn around, and there's nobody there who really wants it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a little bit of both challenges that we're seeing right now. I think in the places around the world where there has been a regulatory impetus, it's obviously moving much more rapidly. Mm -hmm. In places where it is purely voluntary, like the US, I think we're seeing much slower adoption. And if you do any kind of survey analysis on how much reporting around uh, corporate responsibility there is, I think the US probably lags a lot of other countries out there, uh, but it's coming. Mm -hmm. And I think competitive, like most things in life, I'd much rather have a marketplace driven kind of impetus for it than a regulatory driven impetus. And I think competition is a wonderful thing yeah. in terms of encouraging companies. When you see a Shell step out, when you see a PepsiCo step out, um, that will create Inertia, you know, energy and movement and motivation in their sectors to move down this, yeah. this path. So I think it will take a while because a lot of companies don't have the systems in place that they really need to be able to capture information in a way that they can reliably, reliably report in a consistent way, but they're starting to think about that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, we walk before we run, and I mm -hmm. think we're walking at this point. And I, I may have a different view because I have the luxury of not having to, you know, be in that business where we have to talk about it. I don't really want to spend a lot of time reporting about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I actually just want to do it, mm -hmm. right? And our people just want to do it, right? They want to do it because they want to leave the world better than they found it. And as long as our employees know we're doing it, and as long as the customers that we're collaborating with to move some of these things forward know it, like, uh, frankly, if we're doing it and we feel like we got to report about it, I, I kind of wonder if the US model isn't a little bit better, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we're all doing what we're doing and everyone in this room is doing what they're doing at their companies because, like, we have passion to do it and we think it's just the right way to live our lives, right? Mm -hmm. So. I don't feel compelled to report to anybody about it because the only people I care about no one already know, yep. right? Yep. Now, if there's demand at some point that says, oh, the investment community needs to know, fine, we'll do a report. The last thing I'd want to see is these people that were out with Team Rubicon after Sandy not able to do that because they're tied up reporting about stuff like that. Right. Not that interesting, bad allocation of resources, right? So I sometimes, 
We got one person applauding for me. Thank you. Very much. That's, great. that's that's one more than we usually get. So thank you. You're hired, right? I'm not sure. Like you can work here anytime you want. We want you on the team. Well, but I mean, you guys get my point, right? Like sometimes we get caught up feeling like we got to talk about what we're doing. How about if we just do it? Yeah. Like let's let's. Let's do it first, and then if we all want to sit around and talk about it and come up with a report format, awesome. The only thing we should be talking about is what we did that had an impact, and who we did it with, and where it worked, and where it didn't work, and the places where it worked. We should try to replicate it over and over again and teach each other why it worked, right? Yep. Like, uh, I don't think it's that complicated. I, so I, I would just say, I actually, as I usually do, I actually agree with you, particularly as it relates to community involvement and community. You agree with me, but you didn't applaud like she did <laughs> when I made my remarks, so come on. I was applying, applaud, applauding silently. Uh, <laughs> but I do think in area, here's what I've seen that would um, work differently, I think, in certain arenas. If you want to talk about environmental sustainability, mm. I have seen mm -hmm. motivation created in an organization when a CEO steps out and says, you know what? I'm setting a goal, I'm committing to the public that we're going to get there, and I'm going to report against it for each of the next five years. Yeah, I think that does point. help motivate an organization no in that direction, but uh, as it relates to community involvement and what your do people it. grassroots are doing, I couldn't do agree it. with you more. Do That's do the last it, thing in the world I want to start Just measuring, yeah. so I, do I agree. So I, I lied. I, sa I said that we were going to take questions from the audience. We're not yeah, going to have time yeah. for that. I do want to uh, let um, Duncan introduce our guest of honor, who you can all see in the corner over there. But before I do that, um, as Elliot said, this is my, uh, one of my last days with shared expertise. I'm stepping down to follow my heart and to follow my community involvement to go help organize business response to uh, Superstorm Sandy. But I do want to thank all of you, my colleagues at shared expertise, our partners at NYSC, and all of our members and sponsors in the room for letting me do for so long something that I, I truly love. So thank you very much. And thank uh, Duncan and John for a, for a great panel. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Over to you, Duncan.